already cut out a bunch of like petals that I'm going to use. These are just long skinny pieces of vase glass that I've just busted and uh, it looks like my iPad might be working. This is just vase glass, okay? So I had a yellow vase, and what I did was just put it in a box, and then I whacked it with a hammer, just one quick blow with a hammer, and so it busted into a bazillion pieces. So then, and here's kind of, this one is green. This one is green, but this is what I ended up with is a bunch of large sections of glass, okay? So, and I like to keep them large until, gas, damn it. I like to keep them large until I know what I'm gonna do with them. So I whack it down, make it about this size, and then I keep a, all the green in one box, all the yellow in one box, and so on and so forth. So that when I get ready to cut something, like this little leaf, then I just take one of the pieces that is conducive for that and I uh, cut them down to the size I want. So basically, I'm gonna show you real quick what I would do. So, to get a petal out of this, I would take my wheeled nippers. Hey, Melanie. Oh, I finally came up. Hey, Rima. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Darlene. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Anne. And M Melanie, again, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. I'm happy you guys are all here. I'm going to show you really quick how to just cut a, a quick little petal, how I make my shapes. So these are wheeled nippers, and you can get these at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. They're very inexpensive, especially if you use a coupon. Okay, so hey, Kim. So once I have a vase busted and in my box, when I'm ready to cut a particular shape, I will just get a piece that is conducive to what what I'm trying to cut and I'll take my wheeled nippers and I am just going to kind of break it because I want it to be kind of a petal shape or a flower or a leaf shape. Hey Judy! So I'm going to take my nipper and I'm just going to squeeze. I think I am. Ugh. So that is going to break the glass into a little bit of a smaller shape and then what you can do, I'm going to move my board. I don't want all these glass shards on my board. So then what you can do is take these nippers and and literally nip. You don't want to be trying to cut big sections unless you're um, just trying to get it down to a particular size. When you're getting ready to cut a shape, you need to do small nips. So to make this more petal-like, I need to take that point off and that point off. So what I'm going to do is just take my nippers and make tiny little nips into, I'm gonna put that over there, into the side so that it creates a more rounded edge. And then I can take this outside to the concrete and just rub it on the concrete and that will soften that edge so it won't cut you. Or you can use a rubbing stone to uh, sand down those edges as well, as well. Yes, I have my glasses on right now, Jennifer. Um, so I don't really have to wear protective eyewear because I have glasses. So I use my glasses as my protection. But if you don't have glasses, if you don't wear glasses, definitely use protective eyewear and definitely don't do what I just did and not wear gloves. So you can wear some protective gloves Hang on, I have a whole bucket. See, I, say, I am safety conscious, see? So I like these gloves. I got these at Walmart. And they are coated on one side so that you don't cut your hand when you're nipping the glass. And I always also have, see, I also have tons of protective glasses. So I am safety conscious. I'm just being a little bit lazy right now. <laughs> A little bit lazy pants. So, always use protective eyewear, glasses, whatever, and also use coated gloves because you could cut yourself pretty good when you're doing this glass. So that is basically what we do. I just nip small little bites until I have the shape I want. 
And let me put my thing back. Go ahead and elevate. Yes, those gloves are cheap too. The gloves definitely protect your hands. And I am always being lazy and not getting my gloves. And then I'm always sorry because I end up cutting myself. So I, I want to show you what I've done. I've already kind of laid out my sunflower, my glass on a sample board because I was just nipping and cutting all my pieces. And I wanted to make sure I have enough. So this is basically what we're going to do. But we're going to put it on this white. And the reason I want to put it on the white and not leave it on the gray, this one is just stained gray, which is what this one was before I started, in the tool department, Diana, over where their, all their tools are. So then I just uh, sanded it down, and then I added some of the oyster white, and then... Um, Kind of sanded that down a little bit too so it's nice and smooth and the reason we do that because this glass will show up better on the white background because this is a fairly light color yellow and if i do it over the brown it'll cut it won't show up as well it won't really pop so we're gonna wear um, we're gonna wear <laughs> excuse me <coughs> we're gonna wear we're going to use the white, and this is 7 inches wide and about 13 to 14 inches long. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks, D. Ooh, look, I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're going to use for our stem is just a piece of flat mosaic glass. Okay, and how I do that is I take a sheet of glass, and I buy this at Hobby Lobby as well, in the craft department, and it comes in a 12 by 12 sheet, and I don't want it to be a stick straight stem. I could cut like a straight line and make a straight stem, but I wanted it to have a little curve to it because that's more organic and more natural. So all I do is take my pistol grip scoring tool, and I'm just gonna start at one end and you always have to come all the way off. Okay, so I'm gonna start at one end and I'm just gonna score all the way to the other end. Then I'm gonna take my running pliers, which is what these are, and they have a little mark on them so we know where to line them up on our glass. And I am just gonna squeeze and that is gonna break that piece into a nice little stem, okay? So that's how I got my stem and that's how I made my flowers. <coughs> Excuse me. So now all we have to do is gather together all our little flower petals. So I cut a bunch of them before we started. I cut myself two little leaf shapes here and I pre-cut my stem. So we wouldn't be on here for six days. Okay, so then I'm going to use this copper classic glass for the center of my flower. And I'm going to go ahead and put the center of the flower where I think I want it to be, which is going to be pretty much right here in the center of this board. And then we'll kind of bury our petals into, oh, there's a string of some sort. We'll kind of bury our petals and pull those around the outside. Hey, hey, Caroline! Miss Carolyn's in the house! That's my girl. So now we'll just form our petals around the outside edge. And honest to goodness, guys, I just started cutting and didn't, you know, there's not any formula for how we're going to lay out our petals. But I will say this. I want to grab my tool real quick. It ill prepared. I do that just specifically to drive those haters crazy. Just kidding. So make sure, I wanted to show you this, that when you cut all your petals, that you do hone the edges because they're really going to be sharp. Okay? So what I do is I have this tool. It's called a um, rubbing stone. And I just rub the edges. And you don't have to just, you don't have to do a lot. Just a little bit is fine. You don't have to just rub, 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 rub. But, and if you don't have a stone, this comes uh, from Amazon and the link is on my website under links I love on artshattered.com. 
Um, so you want to make sure that's not sharp and that will cut somebody because you don't want somebody admiring your art and then cutting themselves. If you don't have a stone, take them outside to your driveway, to the concrete, on the curb, and just rub them onto the surface. So I'm just going to start laying in some of my petals. I've already kind of laid them out over here, so I made it easy for myself. <laughs> I kind of cheated, but that's okay. Let me push that down a little. And I'm even going to let that one come off the edge. I want to hit it one more time to make sure it's not sharp. We don't want anybody getting cut because I'm going to let that one play off the edge of my board. Can you see that it's off the edge? So I'm just going to start adjusting laying in my little petals and then I'll adjust them as I go. And I already honed these, so we're gonna just get started. Hey, Allison. So I'm just gonna start placing, that little piece of glass is ticking me off, man. Just start placing my glass. My little cute petals. I think I got my sunflower head too big. It's not cooperating very much. Thank you, Lori. So I'm just laying in my petals. No rhyme or reason. I mean, when I cut them all out from over here, if you can see that, when I cut them out, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything special. But I did want them to be tight. I want them to be all close together and to have lots of petals. I didn't want it to just be a few little random petals. So we're going to beef up the, stick that one in the middle. We're gonna beef up the sunflower head too. So this is gonna be super cute. Hey Gretchen! I know, I love it. I love sunflowers anyway, so if y'all haven't noticed already that I'm a sunflower-aholic. And Couple more pieces. You micromanage this glass a little. Thank you. Okay, so guys, that is about it. I, I'm just gonna stand up and look at it from over top to make sure all the petals are kinda where I want them. And I like the fact that that piece of glass is under my petal. I'm going to move that. So this is super, super cute. Hang on. I'm going to micromanage them for one second. So once you get them on, once you get all your petals on, you can just look at it, take it all in, and decide if you need to move anything around. But now I'm just going to beef up my sunflower head just a little and I'm going to cover up some of the tips of those uh, glass petals that I put in. That's too big. And just fill in our sunflower head so it's nice and dimensional. It's kind of fat. You don't want it to be just one little layer of glass. You want it to have some dimension because the glass is very curvy because it's cut from a vase. So I love it already. Okay, so we'll put that aside. And now I'm just gonna stick in my little stem. This is that stem that I cut from um, that sheet glass. And don't forget too, that this needs a little bit of honing as well. So don't forget to hone that. And I'm gonna just stick my stem in right there underneath that petal. These are two cute little flower stems that I made. I don't think I honed these. So I'm going to take them onto. 
So especially when it's something pointed, you want to make sure that you get that taken care of. So we'll add these little things. So super cute. Love it. I love sunflowers too, Teresa. And we have two little, we'll move this one down. We don't want to do them just like this. That's too perfect. We'll move this one down to here. And we, guess what? We're ready to resin. What do you think? Do you love it? I think it is so super cute. And once we get the resin on, all this color is going to pop and be so pretty. I'm so looking forward to doing this. I haven't done a, gl a all glass sunflower in so long. So as per usual, I'm just going to scoot this over just a smidgey. And we are going to get started resin, <coughs> doing our resin. Now, we have a lot of glass to cover, so we're going to mix a little more than we have been in the last couple of days. But I think two ounces should do it. I want to make sure uh, I have enough because I want to make sure and get all of this done. I know, Anita, I love no paint projects. I love to paint too. <clears throat> but no paint projects are fun. They're fun and they're quick, right? <laughs> so I'm going to get my gloves on because you always want to wear gloves when you are mixing and applying your resin. Oh, I got the sniffles and a little bit of a dry mouth going on here. Do you love it? I love it too. This piece of glass has something on it. I got See what that is. It's got a little dot of paint or something. Yes, yeah, super quick. Hey, I'm all about super quick too. Okay, I got hair on my shirt. I wanna get that off before we start mixing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these baby cups again because I'm only gonna mix two ounces and my cup only starts, well, my cup does have a one ounce. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So it's two cups. So we're gonna pour part A in one cup, part B in the other. Thank you, Elaine, appreciate you. We're gonna have a big winner tomorrow from all the people who shared. We're gonna give one of these pieces of art we made away. Thank you for blessing, sprinkling, and sharing. Thank you, Leah, that is so sweet. So as per usual, we're gonna use the art resin that I always use. Uh, it's two parts, 50% of each, so it's a 50-50 mix. So we're gonna go ahead and pour one part into one cup. I gotta find my measure. So, I'm gonna do one ounce of, and this is about gonna take it down to nothing, one ounce of resin, and then I'm gonna put this away from me. So if I get, you know me, I get uh, sidetracked sometimes, I might uh, double pour the same resin. No, I didn't glue anything down, Teresa. They're just laying there. I'm about to put some resin on them to make them all wonderful. And so I'm gonna do, let me turn my cup to the ounce thingy. So I'm gonna do two, or an ounce of this. Gotta go slow, that one's a little runnier. Slow down, sister. A little drop more. So go slow to reach your line so that you don't overpour. Because if you get too much overpour, oh, it looks blurry again. What in the heck is going on in this podunk town with this internet? Is it blurry to you guys? Thank you for sharing, Loretta. Appreciate you. Hmm. Yes, the resin is in the art section. Do not, I repeat, do not use that garbage that's in the arts and crafts section. It will turn yellow on you in freaking a week. I promise, do not waste your money. It has been blurry. Dadgummit, what is happening in this town? 
Oh, this is copper. The center is copper, and I will see if I can focus, if I can get it to focus on something. So yeah, I did not glue down the um, flower petals, and the center is um, Copper Classic, and you can find that on my website. And I fixed the little bot thing where if you comment glass supplies, It'll send you, the, your Facebook Messenger will send you the link to the uh, page on my website that carries, that where I carry um, glass. So if you are interested in glass, I carry small quantities. Uh, I sell it by the pound. Thank you, Tanya. Um, you can comment glass supplies and uh, it'll give you, it'll send you that link in your Messenger. So I am going to mix, I'm going to pour my one part into my cup. Try to get out all I can. I don't want to miss a drop. And, okay, Teresa, you're going to have to say supplies with a L-I-E-S, or you're not gonna be able to get that link. So comment supplies. I should ch I should change it to, to where you can comment supply or supplies, but I didn't think of that. <laughs> so make sure you say supplies, S-U-P-P-L-I-E-S. And then it should send you a link. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I've dumped both parts, part A and part B, into oh, and if it doesn't work I apologize because I'm crazy and uh, I'm not that tech skilled and I think it works but if it doesn't I'm gonna have to go back to the table on that uh, so uh, forgive me if it doesn't work so I have got uh, an ounce of resin and an ounce of hardener in my little cup and I'm just gonna start stirring but here's what I'm gonna do when I st while I stir cuz I can't stay in debt I gotta talk to you guys and see uh, what you're saying to me so oh I got a tickle on my nose and uh, I don't think Reem is in the house so I am going to start now. We have to mix this for <clears throat> three minutes. I don't know what's wrong with me. <clears throat> so we have to mix this for three solid minutes while we chit chat and do not whip it. Do not mix it really, really fast because you're incorporating um, a lot of bubbles if you do. Um, and then you're going to have that Try, that fight trying to get them out so make sure you mix slowly and scrape your sides and your bottom as you go and we're gonna do this for three minutes yeah Rima's my girl Rima's my timer <laughs> okay so what I'm gonna do is just start in the center and make sure my center <laughs> that's so annoying I'm gonna make sure my center is covered really well and then we're going to move on to all the bits. I think it's because my internet is so bad here. And it's not so much my internet as the town. You know, if there's more than six people in town, then the, the web server or the internet service gets all crazy because I live in the country, y'all. I live in the boonies. Boonies, boonies. So I'm going to put a good bit of resin, more than normal, on top of here because I have a lot of glass. And I want it to kind of settle down and run through all that pile of glass down to the bottom to make sure it adheres to our board. So now I'm going to start on my petals. And I'm going to do the outside edges first because that's where we cut those edges and I want to make sure the edges have glass and then I'll come back over the top of each one and we may pick them up and make sure there's resin underneath too it just depends on how it looks when we get started so I'm just gonna go ahead and just hit my edges
and just cover all those little bits. What's wrong with Rima? What's wrong, Miss Rima? So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just hitting the cut edges of the petals first. And then kind of sprinkling it over the rest. I wanna make real sure that the edges have that resin on them. That'll also keep somebody from being cut. Even though I did hone the edges, it'll it's just a little extra security because my I would be mortified if somebody picked up a piece of my art and literally cut themselves. I would be mortified. You don't want anybody to be cutting themselves on your art. That's terrible. So always make sure that's not a possibility. So I'm just gonna keep going around. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I've had to end the had to end the week with a sunflower. I'm gonna pull this a little bit towards me. Actually, I'm gonna turn it around. You guys will be able to see it right side up. And uh, I'll be able to do these last petals without having my arm in the way. So now you guys can see it the right way <laughs> since I forgot to flip the camera. And this one is hanging off the edge a little. So I'm just gonna touch my stick to the edge of that glass I want I want it to stay there I don't want to push it in I do like that it's kind of hanging off the edge so I am going to after my stick stops drizzling I'm just gonna tap that with a little bit of glass I mean a little bit of a little bit of glass a little bit of resin Yes, of course, Benita. You, all of the videos from this week are on my Art Shattered page. All you have to do is look for them. They'll say replay day one, replay day two, whatever. So they're always going to be left on the page. This was a vase, Leah, and I do use plates. I don't use... Uh, like drinking glasses too terrible much because they're usually really thin and thin glass breaks really easy and it's just and it's hard to shape so I don't use like uh, drinking glasses very much I'm gonna take this one off real quick because it's hanging over a good bit and I don't want to run resin on my table or down the side so I'm just gonna put the resin on there myself and then we'll put it back whoops hang on I'll put a little bit here too so I'll stick it back in where it belongs there we go because it's hanging off the top a good bit and I need one piece of glass right there okay so I've pretty much got all my glass covered and so I'm gonna come down here and then we're, we're gonna do these pieces. Same, same. And then I'm gonna come back up here and kind of drown the uh, sunflower just a little bit more than I would normally do. Thank you, Inga. Normally than I would do because I want the resin to go under all those leaves, I mean petals, and I don't wanna half to raise all the petals up and do it by hand. So we're gonna add a little extra resin. So thank you, Teresa. Oops, <laughs> I almost moved my, leaf, my petal or my stem. So let me see. Oh, I also wanted to tell you guys, I keep forgetting to tell you this, for the Shattered Circle, we open the doors at 6 p.m. On, on Monday, and if you sign up, oh, I see a fuzzy or hair or something, I gotta get that out, or I'm gonna forget about it. If you sign up before midnight, you get a special bonus. That looks like a brush hair from 
when I was painting. Get that up. It's giving me trouble. Oh, there we go. So yeah, if you sign up before midnight on Monday, you get a bonus. You get an early bird bonus. And you'll, I'll tell you what that is on Monday. I'm kind of toying between two different things. I hadn't quite made up my mind yet. So, and you see I'm kind of spreading some resin under that leaf. I'm going to do this one too. Just going to add a little bit of resin there. Put that leaf back. Whew. Wipe my fingers off a little. So now I'm going to fill in, thank you, thank you ladies, I love you guys so much, you are awesome. I'm going to spread a little bit of resin around in the void areas, and then I am going to come back over and go try to get in between each of my little sunflower petals so that it sends glass underneath the petals, just to make sure they're nice and secured to my canvas. Now what I could do and what I would normally do for a big piece is just lift up each, each petal and resin under it, but this is such a small piece, I don't think that is necessary. So we're just going to make sure that there's a good amount of resin all in there. Ooh, Mama's having a hot flash. And then we'll spread it around. So that was two ounces, and I think it was the perfect amount. So I'm going to use my hands now to spread the resin. Get that last little bit, because I don't like to waste. So I'm going to use my hands and just spread the resin around anywhere where it's not touching. And with something like this that's a really rustic piece of wood, if you have a small skippy place, don't worry about it. It's so rustic that it doesn't really matter. You don't have to fill in every, oops, I was trying to get under there a little. You don't have to fill in every little spot because it's going to absorb into the wood a little bit anyway. And it's going to be very distressed looking. Uh, it's going to absorb differently. If you wanted a really smooth, perfectly resined piece, you would probably not want to do this on wood because it's going to have that it's going to have that natural highs and lows where it's absorbing into some areas really heavy and not absorbing in others. So don't think you're going to have perfect. We don't do perfect in Art Shattered. My world does not do perfect. Okay, I think we're good. Let me see. There's another hair. That looks like... Um, a Cindy hair. <laughs> so let me just stand up and look at it from a couple of different directions just to see that all my pieces are nice and covered. This is so cool. Oh, somebody's speaking Spanish. No idea what that says. So awesome look at this so what i'm going to do now is take my gloves off because we need to hit this with our torch to pop some of the bubbles but here's the deal don't spend a lot of time doing that because the wood is um the wood has air in it okay anytime you're using wood that is not like completely sealed you are going to get air bubbles so don't think you're going to get all those air bubbles out of that wood because the wood has oxygen in it and it's going to contract and expand and breathe so you're we're just going to make sure the bubbles that are on the glass are nice and popped and nice and smooth and then we're going to move on with our lives so i'm going to take my gloves off i do this the same way every time inside out like this 
so that I don't pop resin into my face or all over my studio. So make sure you do that carefully. You don't want to sling that in your face. So now it is time to torch. And please, I say this every time and I'm gonna continue. Don't let this intimidate you. You do not have to use this great big propane torch. You can use one of those small little kitchen torches or a heat gun or something along those lines. But uh, to get the bubbles out, it does. you do need to apply heat to the surface. So, she does not understand English, but she loves your work. Oh, thank you, Rima. So I'm gonna fire up my torch. And I want to tell you two very important things. The fire from the torch should never touch your resin. Okay, you're going to keep the flame from your torch off of your artwork. And also, you can see how fast I'm going. You can see that my hand is moving constantly. You do not want, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see how fast I'm going. You do not want to focus on one spot. You want to keep your hand moving at all times and keep your flame off of your piece. And we're done. That is it, guys. That is all there is to it. This piece is so super cute. Yes. Yes, see, and even the wood right now, I can see that like right here, and especially on a piece of wood that is super textured, because this is like one of those rough hone pieces of wood. Thank you, Anita. And so it's got a lot of distressing and divots and rough spots. So it's like really nice and thick here, and then here it's absorbed. So don't ever think that you're gonna get it nice and perfect. The point of doing a piece on a really distressed piece of wood is that it has some character. So make sure you don't try to overwork it and, and waste time because it's always gonna have some bubbly, some bubblicious stuff to it. So here is our cute sunflower.